took a solid liberal arts education and turned it into a career in public safety that has been more than anything that I could have ever dreamed of. My story on how I arrived at Fitchburg State and the years spent on this campus, I am sure is not much different than your own. As I look back, it's clear to me that the education I received, the friends that I made, and my entire experience at Fitchburg State certainly had a major influence on who I am today. By way of background, I grew up in Dedham, attended Catholic Memorial High School, and in the late summer of 1984, I moved into Russell Towers with two goals in mind. Making the football team and meeting girls. <laughs> now you have to understand, I had just spent four years at an all-boys Catholic school, so you can see how at least my past experiences certainly shaped my future goals. I was very excited that uh, summer as Fitchburg State had launched the Division III football program. For the next four years, I had the unique opportunity of being the starting running back on a team that won one game in four years. <laughs> so it's no surprise that I ended up in public service and not the NFL. <laughs> but some 30 years later, some of my closest friends were members of that football team, and I will forever treasure the memories and relationships I made during those years. The legendary football coach Mike Dicker once said, you're never a loser until you quit trying. That couldn't have been more true with those early teams, and as time has passed, I have learned that Coach Dicker's words really hold true for all that we do in life. Today you receive a well-deserved diploma officially recognizing your academic accomplishments as there are no doubt it will serve you well as you leave this university. However, equally important is the full experience of attending Fitchburg State. Whether you were living in the dormitories or rented in an apartment with a couple of buddies on Highland, Congress, or Myrtle Avenue, the lessons you learned while not under the watchful eye of your mother and father cannot be underestimated. It was during the years spent on this campus that I, like you, developed my own sense of independence while learning the true sense of responsibility and teamwork. Those are two critical skills that will serve you well no matter what field of work you enter. When my junior year arrived, I realized I needed a plan for after graduation. I would like to take credit for having the insight to realize I needed a plan, but credit goes to my parents who would continuously ask me, Chris, just what is your plan? Does that sound familiar? Fortunate for me, my advisor at the time, Dr. Augustin I.E., suggested that I develop a plan by visiting with people in careers that I found interesting. Well, that guidance set the wheels in motion to bring me here today. I took Dr. I.E.'s advice and spent a few days shadowing an uncle who was a state probation officer in Boston. Fortunately for me and my parents, I had never seen the criminal justice system that close up. Being a probation officer seemed to balance the public safety responsibilities of a law enforcement officer with the higher purpose of really helping people turn their lives around. I knew going forward this was a field of work I wanted to pursue, but then reality set in. Thankfully, my uncle, in a very nice way, explained to me that as impressive as it is to graduate from Fitchburg State with a bachelor's degree, prior experience was needed to pursue a job as a probation officer. I'm sure that message sounds all too familiar, but I'm here to tell you, don't let that prevent you from pursuing your dreams. Your first challenge as you leave this university is to develop your own plan. Don't procrastinate and don't put it off till tomorrow. The world is waiting for you, and to be honest, the world needs all the new ideas, energy, and optimism that all of you possess. Deep inside of you is a special talent just waiting to be discovered, and the only way we find that is by challenging ourselves. It's through challenging ourselves that we find out who we really are, and I know you'll be pleasantly surprised. So back to my story for a moment. I began by earning my experience landing a weekend position as a substance abuse counselor in the spring of my senior year. The pay was low, and it was tough to leave slatteries every weekend, but I knew if I wanted to pursue my goal of being a probation officer, I needed to start gaining experience. That part-time job turned into a full-time job after graduation, and for the next two years, I worked with drug-addicted teenagers. Although it was one of the most rewarding positions I've ever held in my life, I was now ready to begin pursuing a job as a probation officer. So the applications went out, and I finally got a call from Brockton District Court. That entry-level position had paid off and I was invited in for an interview. I put on my best and only suit, I may have even got a haircut, and went for the interview. Within a week, I received a letter in the mail telling me not only was I not being hired, but the state of Massachusetts was now in a hiring freeze for the foreseeable future. <laughs> to say I was disappointed is an understatement, but I made a decision that day not to sit back and wait for opportunities to come to me. 
I decided to take charge of my own future, and here's where Fitchburg State comes in. I reached out to two of my college roommates who had moved to Palm Beach County, Florida to pursue their own dreams and asked for a little help. Like only college roommates would do, they looked in prob into probation officer positions, sent me the applications, and within months, I was hired in Palm Beach County, Florida and reunited with my college roommates. It was 174 Highland Avenue all over again. <laughs> For the next two and a half years, I worked out as a probation officer and began networking the old-fashioned way, joining and participating in professional organizations. Social media is a great tool, but even today, there is no substitute for getting out, making new friends, and developing contacts with people that share similar interests as you. You never know what is coming next in life and who may be able to help you, or equally important, who you may be able to help. And by the way, campus life at Fitchburg State certainly educated us all in the fine art of socializing. <laughs> Through joining a professional organization, my career took a turn. I met a United States probation officer, and after learning about the federal judiciary, I knew where I wanted my career to go. So the applications went out, and as much as I loved being reunited with my college roommates in Florida, I had big plans. You see, after working in a drug treatment program and serving as a state probation officer, I was starting to put together a resume that I was not only proud of, but it gave me confidence to pursue higher goals. That entry-level job in the treatment program may not have paid a lot of money, but it was like gold to me on my resume. On May 2nd, 1992, I returned home and was sworn in as a United States Probation Officer in Boston, a day I'll always remember. For the next five years, I worked hard conducting investigations and supervising some of Boston's most notorious criminals, all the while thinking about the next step in my career. And by the way, those old college roommates from Florida, they chased their dreams back to Boston, and once again, the guys from 174 Highland Avenue were living together. <laughs> Must be a Fitchburg State thing. In 1997, I decided once again to step out of my comfort zone. My relocation to Florida years earlier taught me how to take a risk and pursue a dream that others may have thought was impossible. So I pursued a promotion at the Federal Judiciary's Headquarters Office in Washington, D.C., and that is when my career really took off. I was appointed to a regional administrative position, relocated to Washington, and spent the next seven years traveling to almost every state in the country, learning everything I could about the federal probation system. The hours were long, the travel was frequent, but I knew I had been given a tremendous opportunity. I had been put in a position that let me define my own future, and I did not want to waste it. After seven years working in Washington, I decided it was time to pursue my ultimate goal of becoming a Chief United States Probation Officer. My education at Fitchburg State, coupled with my experience as a counselor, probation officer, and regional administrator, had given me the confidence to not only pursue the position, but more importantly, it gave me the confidence that I could do it. I was ready for the challenge. So the resumes went out across the country once again, and on April 1, 2004, I was appointed Chief U.S. Probation Officer for the District of New Jersey. It was a job that I had always dreamed of, but more importantly, it was in a field of work that I truly believed in. My time spent as a Chief in New Jersey was special. I had an opportunity to lead a great office, and even though I was a diehard Red Sox and Patriots fan, they took me in and made me feel part of their family. I also married my wife, and we started our own family. And six years later, it was starting to look like I would spend the rest of my career in New Jersey. But then the chief's position in Massachusetts became vacant. It had been 14 years since I had left Massachusetts for Washington. It was my dream job, but I knew I had some convincing to do with my family. And honestly, I felt torn about leaving my staff in New Jersey. Well, my wife gave me the support I needed, and I took a chance on returning home to the office where my career in the federal judiciary began. Like anything else in life, hard work, determination, and a little luck prevailed, and I was offered the position. In February of 2011, I returned home and was given the opportunity to lead one of the finest federal probation offices in the country. I have learned a lot since returning home. Up until my appointment as chief, my life for the most part was defined as being a federal probation officer. After years of focusing on my career, coming home helped me realize life was just beginning for me. Sure, I enjoy being a chief, and who wouldn't? sounds important to my kids, and most importantly, you get to be involved in turning people's lives around. But nowhere does it compare to the title of husband, dad, brother, or friend. After 25 years pursuing my professional dreams, I have learned that striking a healthy balance between home and work is the true key to success. As you leave here today and begin your own journey, 
Be sure to continue to make time for your friends and family. No doubt you'll make mistakes and occasionally fall down, as we all do. But the people here today are the ones who believe in you and will help you get back on track. Your time at Fitchburg State University has prepared you for much more than a career. It has prepared you to live life to the fullest. Good luck to all of you, and I wish you nothing but happiness and success. Chris, that was wonderful, and I hope none of you have lived at 174 Highland Ave. <laughs> is that the hockey house now? I don't know, still, is it? I'm not sure, but it's one of those houses. So you made it anyway, that's great. What better words, uh, what better way to set the setting for the celebration today? Uh, talking about honors, I do want to take a few minutes to recognize the Fitchburg State University's honors program which provides talented and highly qualified students with rewarding and innovative courses of study. Uh, the honors program here at the university concludes with a two semester honors thesis. Uh, th I'd ask them to stand as I read their names. Hold your applause. This year, nine students have completed this program. Amanda Buckingham, Catherine Como, Derek Goulet, Kimberly Hilton, Tran Lu, Kathleen Morrissey, Jane Peters, Leah Pusateri, Michelle Trilling. Let's give them a round of applause. Now we come to the uh, part of the program. We have a few awards, and then we'll get on with the awarding of the degrees. I will now ask my wife, Jean, to join me at the podium to present the next award, the Robert V. and Jean Antonucci Leadership Award. Come on up, Jean. Give my wife a round of applause, nice lady. The faculty knows what happened at convocation, I'm not getting into that. Uh, the award is presented to an outstanding senior based on extensive involvement in both campus activities and community service, demonstrated leadership in student organizations, and evidence of a positive impact on Fitchburg State University students. The award has an individual scholarship of $1,500. The class of, 19, of 2014 has no shortage of outstanding leaders. And I am very pleased to announce that Joseph Flanagan has been selected as this year's recipient. Joe, come forward. Hey, you move faster on stage than the dance club. Come on. He's the president of the dance club also. He's got good movement. Come over here. All right. Let me, let's say a good, few good things about him before we give him his check in the white. He's looking at the envelope. <laughs> Joseph, you have given of your time and talent to improve the lives of your fellow students. And by extension, this campus, an orientation leader and mentor, you have helped our students adapt to the challenges and responsibilities of university life. As a member of the Leadership Society, you have helped your peers develop the skills in communication and teamwork that will help them in their careers and their lives. Their success is yours, and on this day you should be proud of what you have helped them achieve. You have also demonstrated your leadership skills in our campus center, where you have worked as a building manager. Again, your talents here reflect upon the larger university community. As Hammond Hall is the living room of the campus, and the place where thousands of visitors will form their enduring impressions of this institution. It is because of talented, dedicated, and responsible individuals like you that this beautiful symbol of our campus is entirely managed by students. Your talents have also shown on the performing stage. As president of the largest club on campus, the Dance Club, you have led by example, performing with skills and boosting the profiles as an already significant campus organization. You graduate with honors today and with your degree. We are excited to see where your talent, intellect, and hard work will take you next. Congratulations on being selected for this award.
Come over here. We'll give you a Hey, Joe, you want to hear something? Stop. You know, Jeannie dropped the check. She was going to try to take it home, right? <laughs> but Chris just told me it's not $1,500, it's $3,000. That's what we thought it was. <laughs> no wonder Jeannie wanted to take it home. <laughs> Needs a new living room. Good job, Joe. You want, you're a great, great individual, great young man. Uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce our distinguished alumnus, Jeremy Roach, who had asked to join me at the podium. Jeremy? Good to see you. Jeremy Roach finished his studies at Fitchburg State University in 1994, embarking on a remarkable career in public education. After a decade as a teacher and principal at Neshoba Regional High School, Jeremy came to Fitchburg High in 2011. There, Mr. Roach has been a transformative figure. He has empowered teachers to collaborate on best practices while always putting students first through his efforts. Attendance is up, the dropout rate is down, and the number of advanced placement course offerings has soared. Mr. Roach has also helped forge stronger ties between Fitchburg High and Fitchburg State, the Honors Academy he started at the high school, has allowed dozens of students to kickstart their college careers in the ninth grade while availing themselves of university resources for their traditional academic work. For his efforts and devotion to creating opportunities for the deserving students he serves, we are proud to present Jeremy Roach with our Distinguished Alumnus Award. Congratulations, Jeremy. Uh, Gina Kakovia Simino joined me at the podium. She's the president of the Alumni Association. You'll hear more from her at the end of the ceremony. Thank you, Gina. In 1989, an annual award for teaching excellence was created by the Alumni Association. You come back, Gina. If I read the script, I'd be better off. Bring her over. What are you doing? You're okay? I'm all right. When you get two Italians up here together, things are in trouble. <laughs> you like that, huh? In 1989, an annual award for teaching excellence was created by the Alumni Association to honor Dr. Vincent J. Mara, who served as president of Fitchburg State from 1976 to 1995. Each year, a committee of past recipients and alumni select the nominee. This year's winner, Dr. Seen Goodlett, has taught at Fitchburg State University since 2001. Seen, would you come forward? Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Goodlett is currently chairman of the university's economics, history, and political science department. Dr. Goodlett is described by former students as an educator who clearly understands his students and the teaching methods needed to engage them he holds students to high standards, but is always approachable. He makes history come alive for his classes, inspiring a love for the subject and creating a deeper appreciation of our past. Dr. Goodlett's efforts have had a positive impact on teaching across this campus by taking a leadership role in, the, in promoting such concept as technology in the classroom. He has also been a champion of public higher education. I am very pleased to present the winner of the 21st Annual Vincent J. Meyer Award for Excellence in Teaching to Dr. Seen C. Goodlett, Professor of History. We give you this award, we wish you the best, and you're really a great guy. Thanks.
I'd ask the, stand, the faculty to remain standing. Uh, I would like to recognize the outstanding achievements of not only Dr. Gulit, but all of the faculty and librarians that are here today. They make this place click. They do the day-to-day -day work in the classroom. Let's hear it for the faculty. Great job, guys, ladies. They're the best.